being a veterinarian means I get to be happy. It means I get to enjoy what I do every day. I get to get up and come to work knowing that I am going to help animals and help their owners and um, hopefully uh, bring healing and health. And it means educating and teaching people about the best way to help their animals. We look at things from a different perspective. Whereas your traditional veterinarian may be trying to sell prescription diets um, or have you feed uh, foods that come from big box stores, we work very closely to tailor each diet to each specific animal, whether that be home cooked, uh, raw, high quality uh, canned or dry food, but we want to make sure that each diet fits each individual animal. Hi, welcome to our food webinar tonight. We're going to try something a little bit different, so hopefully I will push the right buttons and not get things too mixed up. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Dr. Judy Morgan, and this is our food webinar series. And tonight we are going to show three short videos of us preparing home-cooked meals for our dogs. And we'll talk about what they'd be used for and uh, the ingredients that go into them. So we're going to start off um, it is true you are what you eat we're gonna start off with a blood tonic stew and uh, this is just a general stew that you can use for yourselves or for your pets uh, but certainly for any dogs who are weak or anemic or recovering from illness and uh, for those of you who have been watching the webinars all along uh, you'll remember that Oh, I don't know, somewhere around webinar number seven or eight, we talked about blood tonic foods and what they're used for. So you might want to go back and check that out. So sit tight and we'll see if we can get the first video going. Hi, I'm Dr. Judy Morgan from Clayton and Churchtown Veterinary Associates. Today we're here to show you how to make a home cooked stew for your dogs. Today we are going to make a blood tonic stew. This would be a great thing for dogs who are feeling weak, dogs who are anemic, dogs who have been sick, or just something for overall good health of your dog. We're going to use things like beef. Beef is a wonderful chi tonic, good for energy, and has a nice, bloody, rich substance to act as our blood tonic. Beef is warming to the body. We're going to use carrots, which are also good blood tonics and chi tonics, and help move the blood through the body. We're going to use organic carrots. We're going to peel them and cut them small. We're going to use fresh organic garlic. Garlic is antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral, and also is good at helping things move through the body and going to give us some renewed energy. We're going to use red kidney beans. These are low salt red kidney beans. If you can find them organic, that would be even better. The kidney beans are a wonderful blood tonic very filling, very nutritious for the dog. And this is going to be a grain-free meal by using the kidney beans. We're going to use fresh organic parsley. The parsley is also a good blood tonic, very good for moving things through the body and is going to give your dog good breath as well. If we wanted to add to our stew after it's cooked for dogs who are really feeling very weak and we needed to add a little more substance or a little more fat and blood to their blood tonic to their meal, we could add organic hard boiled eggs and top dress the meal. We could also use sardines in water. The sardines are a wonderful source of omega-3 and are really one of the superfoods. You feed them whole with all the little bones and that gives you a nice calcium source. In addition, when we feed our stew, we are going to add some minerals. This diet will not be balanced as far as the calcium phosphorus balance, so we need to add a product similar to RX Vitamins Canine Minerals. There are other products on the market, but I do happen to like this one. And this will help you balance the calcium and phosphorus, which is extremely important. If you're going to home cook for your dog, you must always add a calcium supplement. I like this because it's broad based. I also like to add a probiotic at each feeding. I like RX Biotics probiotics because it gives us many different kinds of bacteria in there and I feel that they are a nice live culture. This does need to be refrigerated after opening. If you have a dog with digestive issues and is not making pancreatic enzymes, 
to digest their food, you can add a pancreatic enzyme supplement. Again, this is only one of many that are on the market, but it's a company that I like. And those would be added after the, the meal is cooked at the time of feeding. Today we're here with Chef Hugh, and he is going to help make our blood tonic stew. We are starting with four pounds of beef. This is actually London broil. It's fairly low in fat. We bought a nice big pack because it was on sale and we're trying to save a little bit of money and not break the bank. We spend the money where we need to on things like organic vegetables. So Hugh is going to dice our meat into bite-sized pieces for our stew. We also bought a lot of meat because we are going to share this stew with our dogs. We will all have dinner together eating the same thing. We may add a little more spice to our meal when we go to eat it, but the dogs will get theirs with no spices other than the garlic and parsley. Okay, Dr. Judy, uh, we're actually going to brown the meat in about four tablespoons of olive oil, and we're going to brown it in batches. If we put all of this meat in at one time, too much moisture collects and you end up boiling the meat instead of browning it. Browning it. So we'll do it in batches. It'll take a little bit of time, but it'll make a more flavorful stew for everybody. It generally takes about two to three minutes per batch. In this cast iron pan, once it heats up, it'll actually brown fairly quick, so you'll want to turn the heat down probably to about a medium low. Okay, as you can see, we're starting to get a little bit of sizzle on our meat. And you don't want to, to brown it too much. This just seals the meat so that all of the flavor stays with it as we cook it. Since this is a tougher piece of meat, we'll cook it on very low heat most of the afternoon. That will allow the enzymes in the meat to break down and provide a more tender and more flavorful meal for all of us. And as you can see, I always have a little helper ready just in case I happen to drop something. If we wanted to decrease the amount of muscle meat that we're putting in the stew, we could add up to 30% organ meat. So we could add things like beef or chicken heart or beef or chicken liver, and that could substitute for some of the beef muscle that we're using. Sometimes that can be less expensive if you're on a budget uh, and you need to uh, do your research, try to find the best sourcing for those products to make sure that you're getting healthy organ meats that you're going to add. Our carrots have been peeled. Our garlic has been peeled and is now being crushed. And there's some question about the toxicity of garlic to dogs. Garlic is not toxic unless you feed large amounts of it. And this is going to be fine because this is going to make a lot of stew divided between a lot of people and dogs. This pot of stew, if it were being fed only to the dogs, would definitely, we have eight dogs, and it would last us at least a week. carrots peeled. We're going to dice them into a fairly small dice. Uh, the stew will simmer all afternoon, so the carrots want to be at least large enough so that they don't disappear completely in the, uh, in the stew. Now that we've got our carrots chopped, we're going to add them to our, our pan just to saute them a little bit. And don't worry about the carrots that fall to the floor. We always have someone that'll come along and, and clean them up. That's one of the reasons why they all enjoy cooking with me.
Now while our carrots are sauteing just a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and chop up our broccoli. And yes, as you can see, the cleanup crew has arrived and is taking care of what I've dropped. Now with your parsley, don't worry about getting a few stems in it. There's a lot of flavor and nutrients even in the stems. It doesn't need a fine chop, just enough so that it mingles throughout with uh, the rest of our stew. That should be fine. We'll check our carrots. They've got just a little bit of caramelization going. So we'll add our garlic. We're going to saute the garlic for just about 30 or 45 seconds. Just enough to where you start to, to smell the fragrance of the garlic. There we go. With that, then we will add our meat back into the pot and all of the juices that have accumulated with the meat. We'll throw our beans in. And then for our liquid, we're going to add beef stock. We want to cover the ingredients completely. If this container of beef stock, which is about three cups, doesn't quite do the trick, then we'll add a little bit of water. That's looking very, very good. We're going to add our parsley everybody into the pool now we're going to give it a good stir to get everything mixed together nicely I'm going to turn up the heat just a little bit I want to bring everything to a boil as quickly as it just begins to boil I'll turn it down to a very low simmer. I'll put my lid on and we'll allow this to work throughout the afternoon. Okay, so there's our list of ingredients that we put into the stew. And um, you might have noticed our guys wear snoods when they eat to cover their ears because uh, spaniels and stews are kind of a mess. Um, and there were also a lot of medications that our dogs take, uh, some of them natural supplements that were added into those bowls at the end. So that's all the white stuff that was on the top. So do we have any questions, Andrew? right now? No, not right now. Not right now. Okay. Still oh, okay. So if anybody has any questions about the blood tonic stew, I will tell you we had this for dinner and then I had it again for lunch and um, everything just kind of melted together. The meat was so tender. Uh, it ended up being a really, really phenomenal uh, pot of stew. And I think our dogs got two or three meals and we got dinner and a couple of lunches out of it. So it was a, it was a, pretty good batch of stew and um, we spiced our batch up a little bit but not much and uh, I will mention the um, 
kidney beans, we did drain and rinse them. They were low salt, but we figured, you know, the more salt that we could get out of there, the better. And the um, beef broth that we used was no salt. Yeah, and right on that topic, one question, did you add any other salt at all while cooking? Nope, we did not add any salt. So we basically made this a very low salt meal. Uh, a lot of people have been asking me questions about dogs with heart disease and trying to keep their meals low sodium. And um, the latest clinical studies don't really support that we have to have really restricted sodium for those dogs. Um, if you're adding the minerals to these meals, you're going to get um, all of that that you need in there. So you don't need to add anything to it. Okay, so that's all the questions on the blood tonic. We're gonna move into our next one. So back at our intro again, and uh, we're going to talk about pup loaf. And uh, the screen that's up right now is for recipe number two. We're gonna show you the video, which is recipe number one. Hi, I'm Dr. Judy Morgan. Today we're going to discuss how to do home cooking for your pets. Today we're going to make a meatloaf or a pup loaf for Miss Madison. Miss Madison was exposed to tainted dog food that had salmonella in her dry food. She didn't eat for weeks and spent three weeks in critical care receiving protein transfusions. Now she will only eat home cooked food, so we are going to make a healthy food for her to help bring her iron levels back up, soothe her digestion, and give her the vitamins and minerals that she needs. So today our guest chef will be Hugh Grant, making a pup loaf for Miss Madison. Okay, because Miss Madison has been sick for so long, we are going to use a somewhat processed product to start. We are using a product from Honest Kitchen. And this product is dehydrated vegetables and fruits, most of which are organic, along with a vitamin and mineral mix. So we're going to use the dry powder and we're going to add hot water to allow this product to rehydrate. This will be the green vegetable part of Madison's pup loaf. So today's pup loaf for Madison is going to be a blend of meats. We need some that are going to warm her system and some that are going to cool her system because she has a lot of heat and inflammation in her bowel. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grind some pork. Pork is a cooling meat and we were not able to find a gra previously ground low fat pork at the grocery store. So we are taking a very lean cut of pork and Hugh is going to grind that using his standard KitchenAid mixer. Okay, so we have about six tenths of a pound of pork ground and ready to go. Now we're going to add our other ingredients. We're going to add two pounds of grass-fed pasture-raised ground beef with no hormones or antibiotics added. And to this mix, we're now going to add one pound of veal. This was locally sourced and freshly ground. So we now have about three and a half pounds of meat in our bowl. This mixture we are going to add free range organic eggs which were the chickens were fed naturally with no antibiotics or byproducts. The eggs are to act as blood tonics and also to help us a binder to hold our pup loaf together. And now we're going to look at our vegetable mixture. which has rehydrated very nicely and is fairly soupy. If you feel that the mixture is too soupy, you can always add more of the dry product. And as any great cook knows, the only way to really make a meatloaf is to get down and dirty and use your hands.
coating our pans with extra virgin olive oil so that our pup loaf won't stick. And we're going to make two different sizes of pup loaf. The small pans will be enough for about three meals for our small dog, Miss Madison. And we can store those in the refrigerator or we can freeze them for future use. We're going to make one bigger pup loaf, pup loaf and this will give us probably four to five days of meals. And again, a good chef always uses his hands. So here we have our finished product, one large and four small pup loaves. All together, we have three and a half pounds of meat and three cups of our vegetable, vitamin, and mineral mix. If we had decided not to use the pre-made and dehydrated vegetable, fruit, vitamin, and mineral mix, we could have chopped our own fruits and vegetables to add to our pup loaf. If we had done that, we would have needed to add a mineral mix so that the calcium levels would be appropriate. Okay. Our pup loaves are ready for baking, so Hugh will place them on a stone cookie sheet and they are going to go into the oven. Okay. Our oven has been preheated to 350 degrees and our pup loaves will cook until they're solid, generally about 45 minutes. It may be a little longer or a little shorter depending on the size of your pup loaf and the amount of moisture you added. Oh. Oh. Okay. 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 All right. <laughs> okay. So that was our first pup loaf recipe. Full screen it with that one, okay? Far right. Far right. Sorry. Okay. So uh, that was our first pup loaf that we made. And um, then we did make a second pup loaf um, later in the week. And I don't know why we didn't video it, but we didn't, but we have some pictures. And for this recipe, we were feeding all nine of the dogs that were here this week. So there's a lot more food here. Um, and uh, with Madison's food, she couldn't have as much fat. So we used 95% lean ground beef. Um, for this batch, we used 85% lean ground beef. And again, we use grass fed. So we got 12 pounds of ground beef, three pounds of ground chicken breast, two and a half pounds of chicken gizzards, two and a half pounds of chicken livers. And the reason we did that is remember, we have said that we could use up to 30% of our meat as organ meat. So if you look at that, we have 15 pounds of muscle meat and five pounds of um, organ meat. For our binder, we used eight eggs. And then we used, uh, again, the Honest Kitchen Preference uh, freeze-dried vegetable and fruit mix, which I, I really like. I, th this was a, a new experiment and it came out really, really nice. Um, so all told, we ended up with 20 pounds of meat and six pounds of the um, vegetable mix with the Honest Preference. So this made a lot of pup loaf. Um, so here I am mixing it. The only pot we had big enough was our lobster pot and I was pretty much into my elbows stirring around pup loaf um, and I had lots of little faces watching me and wondering how long it was going to take to get that into the oven. <laughs> but you can see they're pretty patient and our trainer will be happy to see butts on the floor. So here is the pup loaf, 26 pounds of pup loaf. We didn't have enough um, loaf pans, so we ended up using lasagna pans. And no, the wine did not go into the pup loaf. That was for the cook. Um, we had a lot of fun making this and our dogs are still eating. And I think that will last us about eight days. 
Um, however, we also made a couple of stews in in the mix there, so they've been bumping back and forth between pup loaf and stew, and uh, so we're going to end up having to freeze some of this because it's not going to sit in the refrigerator for the whole week and a half. And uh, there's everybody enjoying that particular batch of pup loaf right after it came out of the oven, and I don't see anyone being unhappy. You'll notice there's no snoods on the guys this time, and that's because the pup loaf is fairly dry. It's not a soupy stew, so it doesn't get in the ears like the uh, stew does. All right, do we have any questions on pup loaf? Yes, we do. We do. Uh, does the loaf still turn out okay if you use fresh organic vegetables instead of the, the dry stuff? Yes, your loaf will still turn out okay if you use fresh organic vegetables. I would chop them fairly fine or run them through a grinder uh, so that they mix in really well. Um, but they should be fine by the time they cook inside that loaf for 45 minutes. They're going to be well cooked and easy to digest as well. Um, I just, I decided I had gotten some of this Honest Kitchen uh, preference as a sample and thought I would try it out. And it ended up working out really well and I thought it would be easy for people who don't want to take the time to have to chop and, and peel and, and do all of that stuff. So uh, this ended up being a, a really, really nice change up and I, I was really happy with it. Can you find gizzards in the meat department or do you have to specifically ask for them? No, the gizzards this week were on sale at the Acme. That's how we ended up with them. We went past this um, buy one, get one free section and the livers and gizzards happened to be there. So, um, and they actually said that they were, you know, all natural and, and, you know, no antibiotics and preservatives and blah, blah, blah. So we were pretty happy and we just lucked into that and it was inexpensive. So the pup loaf ended up, our beef was a little bit expensive, but the pup loaf ended up running about $3 a pound because our gizzards and liver, um, it, for the two and a half pounds, it was $1.69. So that brought the price of things down pretty nicely by adding that in. Um, at what grocery stores can you find grass-fed beef? At what grocery stores can you find grass-fed beef? We're lucky. Uh, there's Laura's Beef, which is grass-fed, antibiotic, free, yada, yada. Um, and that's available at our Acme. Certainly, if you have a Whole Foods or a Wegmans or a Trader Joe's, you're going to probably have pretty good luck finding those sorts of things. And certainly, if you have a local butcher anywhere, I would go talk to them. Hugh, um, since he's decided we're not going to purchase from the Amish anymore, uh, had to find a new butcher. And so he searched around and went in and introduced himself and told the guy what we're doing and, and why we're doing it. And um, so he's been pretty lucky. The guy is, is really willing to work with us. So, um, you know, check the phone book, check online, see if there's a butcher anywhere nearby. And, you know, those guys are great. And they're always looking for good customers who are going to come in there looking for the best stuff. They'll get it for you. Uh, and what are some other meats you could use instead if you can't find grass-fed beef? What are other meats you could use instead of beef? Um, you can use ground pork. You can use ground turkey. You can grind, you can actually, you can buy ground chicken. Um, so anything that you want to use. And um, a note on the turkey, since we are coming into Thanksgiving very soon, you can feed turkey to your dogs as from from your Thanksgiving dinner as long as it is not a butterball or other processed turkey that's been injected with fats. If it is a free range turkey that you go buy from the turkey farm or it's a natural turkey that doesn't have anything added to it, then it's fine to grind up some of that meat and give it to your dogs and certainly the organs. You don't want to give them all the grease that's in the bottom of the pan. You don't want to do all the skin and the fat because that's going to cause the vomiting, the diarrhea, the pancreatitis. But certainly some of that really nice breast meat is going to be absolutely fine. So some of those turkey leftovers that you have, you actually could grind and use them in a turkey stew for the dogs. Okay, so that's the end of those questions. So we're going to move on to our third and last video. And this one is going to be a chi tonic stew. And if we remember back from the earlier webinars, chi tonics are good 
uh, for energy. Chi is energy. So we're definitely going to want these for dogs who are weak or older, dogs with cancer where we need to get things moving. Um, but I will tell you, this is another one that we shared with the dogs and it was just a darn great meal. Uh, okay. Hi, I'm Dr. Judy Morgan from Clayton and Churchtown Veterinary Associates in New Jersey. Today we're continuing our food webinar series and we're going to make a home cooked stew. This stew is going to be a chi tonic stew and we're going to balance our chi tonic stew using warming, neutral and cooling foods so that we have a balanced meal. So this is our best friend, our crock pot and our crock pot will make a fairly large meal and this is the meal that we are going to have for dinner tonight along with all of the dogs. So we are going to use obviously good ingredients that we can share. So for our warming foods, we're going to start with chicken. Chicken is a great chi tonic. We're going to mix white meat breast and dark meat thigh. And these are uh, premium meat that's all natural and antibiotic and hormone free. We're also going to add sweet potatoes. We will peel and cut up the sweet potatoes. The sweet potatoes are also warming and are a wonderful chi tonic. We're going to add apples because those are cooling and I think apples go very well with chicken and with potatoes. We have a little butternut squash and acorn squash and these we're going to peel and cut up as well and those are good chi tonics. We're going to use brown rice which is also a chi tonic and that's going to be cooling to help balance our meal and give us a little bit of carbohydrate. And then we're going to add shiitake mushrooms. Shiitake mushrooms are neutral, they're a good chi tonic, and they also happen to have anti-cancer therapies, so that's a, always a good thing to add into a stew. We're going to use a natural chicken stock to put our stew together and then add water as needed. Okay, now that Judy has introduced all of the ingredients, let's get started putting everything together. We'll open up our chicken breasts. We're going to cut these into nice bite-sized pieces, again, not only for ourselves, but also for the spaniels. This is a boneless chicken breast, so it makes it uh, go just a little bit faster. Okay, we're wrapping up our chicken breast. It's all cut up and into the pot we'll get our chicken thighs. Again, these are boneless chicken thighs. We're adding chicken thighs because a lot of times they add a little bit more flavor to the uh, to the soup and just a little bit of a little bit of fat. Chop them up again into bite-sized pieces. Okay, we're just about to get all of our chicken cut up. I'll put the last of it into, into the pot and then I'm going to take a break for just a half a minute and clean my knife and, and my cutting board before we chop the vegetables. Okay, our uh, sweet potatoes are peeled. We'll go ahead and chop these up. We'll do probably a medium dice so that they don't totally disappear in the, uh, in the soup during the cooking process. But again, nice bite-sized pieces for everybody that's going to enjoy it. vegetables you can find in your uh, in your grocery store already cut up. I uh, enjoy my knife and cutting board so I do all of my own cutting and chopping but if we were in a hurry certainly we would buy everything already diced and ready to go. The 
the next thing that uh, we will add are our apples and we want to go ahead and peel the apples and the trick to a really good soup is to be able to peel the apple all in in one peel you know then that it's really really flavorful okay we're going to finish up dicing our apples and as Dr. Morgan reminded me, you want to make sure that you do get the seeds out of the apples because they are toxic. Okay, getting the balance of the apples in there. And next, then, we're going to start with our mushrooms. Again, these are shiitake mushrooms. And we are going to dice these up into fairly small pieces as uh, the uh, soup cooks down. The mushrooms will also tend to sort of disintegrate into the, uh, into the broth. But they're also adding an absolutely wonderful flavor to our, to our stew. going to notice that my pot looks awfully, awfully full, but as it starts to cook, the vegetables will soften and everything will sort of consolidate and uh, we'll have plenty of room in, in the pot for everything. And just a, a nice rough chop on these vegetables. Okay, the rest of our mushrooms are going into the pot. And it's time to kind of wrap things up a little bit. I'm going to add about a cup and a half of the brown rice. We're just sort of measuring it very, very quickly. Sort of spread it out. And then we're going to add a 32 ounce container of unsalted chicken broth. We're not seasoning this right now. As soon as everything is cooked, then we will pull out the spaniel's portion of it and add a little bit of seasoning for ourselves for dinner. And we'll all enjoy it together. I'm not going to add all of this water. I've got about four cups. I'm probably going to put in about a cup, cup and a half, because as many of you know, with crock pot cooking, it makes its own moisture and we don't want to overflow the pot. So we will take a spoon, sort of spread it out just a little bit so that I don't make a mess. I'm going to just Spread it out about like that. I'm going to put the lid on it. I'm going to set my crock pot on high and let it cook for the rest of the day while we go out and run errands. Okay, and I can vouch for the fact that that stew was pretty darn good, and I had some more for lunch today. Okay, uh, questions? Yes. Uh, for dogs with chicken allergies, can we substitute maybe beef as a meat source? Will it go well with these other ingredients? Sure. <laughs> can we substitute beef if you have a chicken allergy? Would it go well with the other ingredients? Sure, it, you could do that. Uh, beef is also a good cheat tonic. Uh, rabbit's a great cheat tonic. I don't know how many people want to eat rabbit. Um, for dogs uh, that are not too hot, you could use venison. 
uh, particularly if there's anybody who um, who hunts um, you could use lamb in that stew and I think that would work as well I don't eat lamb because I can't stand it but um, it would work really well so if you have dogs with chicken allergies sure just pick another meat uh, and with that said most dogs with chicken allergies are not necessarily allergic to turkey so you might be okay using turkey in there this individual says i add fresh herbs to my stews is that not okay mainly rosemary thyme oregano and basil okay are fresh herbs okay in the stews things like uh rosemary basil thyme oregano sure if you have fresh herbs especially if you've grown them in your yard and they're organic and they don't have any pesticides on them absolutely feel free to spice it up a little bit you just have to if you if you're sharing it with your dog, you need to know your dog's taste. And some of them love things with spices in them, and some of them will walk away. So we tend to make ours a little bland for all of our dogs. We're feeding a lot of dogs, and I have no idea, you know, who would want what. So rather than make six different pots of food, we make one, and we don't spice it up very much. And with that last stew, I didn't mention the minerals, but if you are feeding home-cooked only for more than a couple of days, then you need to be adding the minerals. If your dog is normally on a processed food, you know, whether it's canned or dry or frozen raw, and you just want to mix things up a little bit and say, well, you know, it's a cold weekend. I feel like cooking a stew and I'm going to share it with the dogs. Don't worry about the minerals if it's for a couple of meals, but if it's going to be long-term, then you've got to get the, the uh, calcium balanced. Okay. So that's all the questions we have. And so the question is, what's next? And that's a really good question. And uh, I don't know. Uh, we'll be off next weekend. My production crew is going to be out of town doing some production in Ohio. So we will uh, post announcements on Facebook as to what's coming up next. Or you can check my website. Uh, the weekend after this next weekend is Thanksgiving weekend. So I don't know if we'll get a webinar done that weekend or not because we are in three Christmas parades that weekend, so it might be a little crazy. Um, so we'll let you know. Just uh, stay tuned and watch Facebook and our website. Thanks a lot. Thank you for joining us for our food webinar. Remember to follow us on all of our social media on Facebook and Twitter at ClaytonVetNJ. That's ClaytonVetNJ. Remember to visit our website as well for more information about how you could help your pet live a healthier lifestyle. Make sure you join us next week for the next installment of Dr. Morgan's Food Webinars.